I'm spending my whole weekend in my pajamas. The whole thing for me is I'm trying to save you time, money, and energy. I have got a PhD in money. So like, what do I care what some random person on the internet thinks of me? In new year, new me, you gotta have some fun. God, Tim, everything you touch just like is amazing. And I wanna tell that person, no, it's not. I'm only trying to make one person happy, and that's Tim Castleman. What up, everybody? It's your boy, Tim Castleman, back with another and maybe possibly one of our final Cuba edition episodes. Uh, we had a tremendous day today. Today was Sue's day. Yes. Because uh, not just Tuesday, it was Sue's day because we got to do <laughs> the one excursion that she found at the very beginning of us talking about this trip that she was like, out of everything possible to do on this the entire- This is what I need to do. Yeah, entire sure. island of Cuba. This is the one <laughs> thing. Much like I had the desire to find the Peso cigars, she said we have to go see and learn everything we can about Ernest Hemingway. Yes. And uh, I will tell you, folks, a couple couple fun things happened, right? First, we hit up Ivan <laughs> the... an adventure. <laughs> yeah. We hit up Ivan the Terrible, and yep. we said, Ivan, listen, we need a ride from A to B. Will, right. you, will you help us go uh, there? And he said, yes, absolutely. He goes, I'll be there at 1.30. I said, oh, Ivan, we don't need you till 1.30. And he goes, okay, I'll be there at 1. And I was like, all right, we don't need you till 1.30. He's like, okay. And at 1 o'clock, we got the text, <laughs> yeah. Tim, I'm here. And not only did Ivan come on this trip, his wife. His uh, lovely wife, came. who's yes. celebrating a birthday soon. Happy Ooh, birthday. Yes, which has a birthday <laughs> upcoming. And then there was a thing about the Bahamas, and who knows? There was... <laughs> but I did ask, I said, Ivan, listen, I've been steaming about it all night. I got to know, how bad did I get taken? I said, where you dropped us off last night, which, by the way, the restaurant is named after him, uh, yeah. Ivan, yeah. And uh, I said, where, where, and where we are now, how much would you charge me? And he goes, oh, $15. And that made me feel a little better that we paid only $10 more than we should have. But then I'm even more confused because we get a taxi from a farther location today. And I'm like, how much to take us there? He's like, $5. Yeah, $5. So we're just <laughs> like, what is the actual yeah. price here? Uh, so a reminder, folks, get the download of the apps uh, on your phone ahead of time so that there's no questioning. You just right. go, this is what I want. Yeah, how much are you going to pay? Yeah. Clearly, there's not a lot of regulation. Yeah, in, uh, exactly. Cuba. Yeah. So either way, we paid him. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and I said, Ivan, I said, look, you know, I slipped you a couple 20s uh, for the tour last night and a couple 20s for some cigarillos. I said, uh, bring those back. I'm going to bring you the big American uh, $100 bill uh, of freedom with me. And, uh, and so he drives <laughs> us all the way there. He gives us the 20s. We give him the 100 And we're like, okay, how much for this? He goes, oh, I only gave you $80 back. Right. So he had already taken out his fee <laughs> plus five. Well, way to go, Ivan, uh, yeah. to get us there. But you know what? Uh, it feels getting uh, taken advantage of by your friends better right. uh, than just some random stranger. So, uh, yeah. Uh, but, no, he was, he was great. He's, uh, he's going to be our taxi to the airport. But By the way, did you notice the price for the taxi to the airport went down by $5? I did not notice yeah. that. Yeah, 25 is what uh, we're at now. But okay. 30 would tip, I'm sure. So, you know, everybody is out here making money. And speaking of making money, mm -hmm. uh, because we are in the great country of Cuba, uh, we cannot book anything through the mainland like Airbnb. Airbnb, so we are reliant on cash deals, and uh, those suck. I got to be honest with you, uh, you know, e e because you're at the mercy of the people there. Right. You know, it's like, well, if I don't want to do this, then I guess we just go see Hemingway stuff on our own, you know. Uh, but we paid, and, and I was like, you know what? It's Sue Day, right? So we got we're gonna have to do private a private tour. So we told them in advance, hey, we don't want any other commoners with us. I don't want keep, <laughs> no. keep the bridge and tunnel crowd away from That's us, right. right? We want to go mucho exclusioso and, uh, and, <laughs> and book the private tour. So we show That's up. True. Well, okay. First we go uh, to the area. And, of course, because we've got been picked up. Yeah, we up, had all this extra time. Yeah, we had 30 extra minutes. We yeah. thought, you know what? We'll Let's walk, walk down to the Capitol. And, uh, and get a photo. Yep. And Sue, what, what happened when you <laughs> stepped like, foot on the Capitol? I'm going to walk up the steps yeah, just like was, I saw these people last night doing. It was not good enough for no. us to get a photo in front of the Capitol. We must rise on the Capitol building yeah. steps. So, hey, anyway, I'm doing my best um, Rocky impersonation, yes. you know, going yes. up to the middle. And, and then, you know, I'm like, oh, and this guy's like, no, no, no. He's yeah. waving at me. Yeah. This guy's sitting in a chair that's at the top of the steps. He basically said, get the fuck off yeah. the steps before. Like, oh, sorry. Yeah, we sorry. start shooting you, America. Yeah. 
American yeah. pig. And we were like, oh, shit. So, of course, we uh, had her stop, grabbed a couple photos, things yeah. like that. Then, uh, as we're walking, actually, before we even did that, but, oh, yes. but, it's, uh, but it's better to kind of bunch them all together. <laughs> Look, my number one tip to anybody coming to a foreign country is do not, under any circumstances, if you can at all help it, stay in a tourist area because that's where all the tourist oh, traps yeah. are. That's where all the scammers are. That's all, all the con artists. You know, all, all the people trying to separate you from your money uh, mm -hmm. any way possible. So we're walking up to the Capitol. We see this beautiful baby, right? And, of course, we uh, engage. Hi, yep. sweetie. Good to see you. The lady is like, oh, we're, oh and here's another telltale sign. If they ask you where you're from... They're trying to get to you to talk to them. Yeah. Yeah. If they ask you after you've already agreed on money where you're from, that's one thing. But after, if before, 99% chances you're getting scammed. Yeah. Uh, and uh, she goes, where are you from? We're like, oh, Texas, Boston, you know, all this stuff and all that stuff. And, uh, and I'm like, okay. I'm like, all right, well, I've seen the baby. Time to keep moving. And uh, Sue keeps, in, it keeps talking to her because she's a mom and yeah. she has a heart like, and she baby. cares. I'm and like, then all of a sudden, lady, the lady's like, listen, I don't want any money, but I need milk for the baby and we're like i'm sorry what like we couldn't understand her yeah. and she was like i need milk for the baby and uh and then before i know it she does an old whistle uh for her daughter or whatever daughter pops right up and i'm like oh we're about to get yeah, separated like, what's going from on our here? so yeah. i'm like sue <laughs> it is time to go it is yeah. time to keep walking there so uh we got away from that one only to run into a lady with one leg oh who, yeah what was that, that yeah yeah she's like She's like, oh, no. Like, it's almost yeah. like she knew you. It's, I was like, who they, is this girl? They're extremely friendly. Very friendly. And then they want to get to know you. And then yeah. they want to tell you their sob story. And then they want your money. Yeah. That's basically how those things work. And I was like, no, no. And she's like, don't leave. Please don't and leave. And she was going to give you a big hug or Yeah, something. she's trying I'm to like, follow. Oh, and I'm yeah, like, get the <laughs> fuck away from me, right? I do not want to participate in whatever scam it is that you have going on yeah. there. Um, so luckily we were able to uh, duck, dodge, and evade a yep. majority of the scammers there and uh, meet up with our party. Let me just make sure. Okay, I didn't see the red light on there. I just want to make sure it's still recording. Um, meet up with our uh, Airbnb party to uh, take us on the tour. Uh, yep. So there's a guy who has a piece of paper with our name on it. Yep. Uh, we're like, hey, he's like, are you Tim? I'm like, yep. Thank you. Probably saw me. Fat gringo. He's like, yeah, that's probably the guy. Uh, and he goes, okay. He goes, hold on one second. He goes and gets another guy to come over. And he goes, yep, I'm the boss of this. He goes, so you pay me. And I'm like, okay. He's like, it's 180. I'm like, here's 200. I need some change. And he's like, oh, I don't have change. I don't have change. Yeah. He's like, well, you better oh, no. fucking find it, amigo, because <laughs> we need $20 back. So luckily, uh, through uh, a miracle, we'll say, they suddenly found 20 <laughs> right. euros for us to, uh, to uh, a, a get our, our change yeah. back. And then we're like, okay, cool. So they're like, great, follow us. So we follow our guy who uh, is awesome. Turns out that he was a former gov government uh Translator yep. for uh, delegates and all that yep. stuff. Uh, and we're like, okay, we'll follow him. Then we meet our taxi driver. And we're like, okay, all right. Yep. So we're basically we're renting a taxi. That's cool. And then he takes us down this row. And uh, there's this beautiful blacked out um, enclosed uh, old 53, you know, Chevy, whatever. And then there's this hot pink uh, 52, 53 Chevy um, next to it. And uh, he's like, okay, we're going in this one. And I'm like, the black one that's covered and probably has air conditioning and modern amenities. <laughs> They're like, no, no, senor. We're doing a two-hour open tour in the hot pink mobile. Now, we spent two hours out in the sun yesterday. We're both red from it. And we swore. We're like, we're not doing this open, uh, you know, open bay. Yeah. We're just like, oh, this is, open. Yeah, yeah. But again... We've already paid our money, and this is not the time to get into an argument. So right. I guess the key is you've got to be very specific with your request and your ask and be like, listen, if I'm going to do a private tour, do you think you could make it feel like a private tour by having an enclosed vehicle with air conditioning for us wretched Americans who <laughs> like to be cool yeah. at all times and don't have the sun beating down on us for two hours while we drive around? But we get into it. We start the tour. We find out again our host uh, for this tour. It was a um, a uh, translator for the government. Uh, did he that spoke for two very years. Very good English. Yeah. And Italian, uh, English and Italian is what he knew. Right. And he said, if you go to college, there is no cost to attend college, but you are required to work two years for the government. 
And if you're a female, you're required to do three years because they don't go into the military right. for a year like the guys do. So we're like, okay, that's cool. Then we talked to our, our taxi driver. Don't get me wrong. Like, I, I wasn't happy with the situation, but the people were amazing that we got. Our very taxi nice. driver yep. was They're super nice. Great. And he just casually mentions, he's like, oh, this car. He goes, I'm a mechanic. I keep good track of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it cost me like $5,000. Oh, by the way, there are no payments here. When you want a vehicle, yeah. you're cash. paying 100% cash yep. up front. You want a house, 100% yep. cash, no payments. There's no payments. There's no terms. There's one payment. It's a balloon payment, and it's all that you owe right. there. And they showed us, by the way, he was like, oh, let me show you some current prices of used vehicles. For a 2014 Toyota Corolla, take a guess out there in uh, TV land, how much something like that cost? Because if you're not saying $48,000 yeah. for a 2014 Toyota Corolla, which again, you must pay all in one payment of cash, then you would be incorrect. Right. That's how crazy the, the car market is here. So this guy, he's telling us about his car, and you can tell he loves it, and he's, he's had it forever and all this. And he just casually says, oh, yeah, it's got over a million miles A million on it. miles. In fact, he could tell us down to the mile. I forgot. Yeah. But it's like uh -huh. 1,100,040, you know, whatever Yikes. it was. It was like, oh, shit. I mean, that's just improbable. And then we asked him on the first stop. We're like, well, how, how, long, how many miles do you think you put in the car? And he's like, about 250,000. Yeah. I yeah. mean... Just wow. Just like, oh, snaps. I mean, it was just crazy to kind of and experience And it ran that. well. I mean, it just, I'm flabbergasted, you know, how they keep the cars up and um, even the body isn't terrible, yeah, right? Yeah, you would they, think you know, with all the salt in the sea. Yep. Beautiful vehicle. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, they, we were they, very pleased. Yeah, they were absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. So um, we get in, you know, we start driving. They take us to Hemingway's estate, which was 15 acres. 15, 15 correct. acres, yep. yeah, that him and his third wife purchased uh, out, off of a newspaper ad. was the fourth wife. Was third. it the third? Third, okay, yeah, that's what he he's said. He's got yeah. so many wives, I can't keep track of it. Yeah, him. he's got four yeah. wives, apparently. Um, you know, and I'll be honest, I don't know shit about Ernest Hemingway. I know he's a badass from everyone I've heard, but I don't know any of the stories. After the he hearing the stories, I'm like, yeah, this dude was a badass. I mean, this guy fought in World War I and two. He had a fishing boat that he that he got government permission to put machine guns oh, on. Oh, yeah, the machine guns on the fishing boat, ever, yeah. <laughs> yeah, had to take a, the German or the U-boat yeah. or whatever uh, in not only, not one, but two plane crashes. So his he's, go, he's flying somewhere, don't know where, plane crashes. They send another one to pick them up. They, it goes up and it explodes upon uh, takeoff. So back-to-back -back crashes. Yep, and he survived the ambulance crash. Yep. Right? Yeah, I mean, this guy. <laughs> so you can't uh, kill this guy. This is like Final Destination Ernest yeah. Hemingway thing. But yeah. they have his um, his estate perfectly preserved. It was in great condition. And they uh, they have, you know, restoration effects going on there right. and things like that. But And all of his, you know, personal effects, like the books and the, you know. Yeah, so, the so they take you by this day. pool. They're like, yep, yeah, back in the day. I mean, this pool would be a luxurious pool today. Oh, my God, today. yeah. Yep. I couldn't imagine back then they were just like, oh, my God. It's and crazy then, how deep the deep end of the pool yeah, was. I mean, 10, like, 12 feet at least. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was it was huge. They take us to where he had built a tower and basically it was going to be for storage of his hunting yep. stuff. And it was going to be a writer's room. And he had a whole writer's room set up there. Right, right at and the top. And then once he built it, he didn't like it. He didn't like it. So he never wrote a, 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 a word there. A beautiful view of the city. Yeah. I mean, it was just absolutely gorgeous. But he didn't yeah. like it. He didn't like it. So he said, nope, I'm not writing there. Yeah. So uh -huh. we come down there. And then we go to the, the main house. And they show us um, also something that was crazy back then. He had heaters and air conditioning, which was state of the art, top of the line back then. Yes, and and yep. like the air conditioner looked like it was the size of a jet engine. It was huge. It was so freaking huge. Um, but uh, we got to tour around all that. Uh, you can't go inside because they want to preserve it, obviously. Um, but they have it to where you can kind of lean in and look. Yeah, and they're very yep. friendly. They're very, very friendly nice. in doing that. And, we saw, you know, the kitchen area, the living room where they entertained, and we saw um, his library. What else was there? They had, so on quite a few of the walls, they would have, like, 
bus of like, oh, they had the buffalo that they said he shot. That they said he actually shot yep. in Africa. Yep. Um, they had that the, the jar with the what was it a lizard? Oh yeah. That like went after his cat or yeah, something. Yeah, they had some dog? cats, and I guess the lizard and the cat fought, <laughs> and I guess the lizard won, and he put him in like some formaldehyde. Yeah, thing. It's, it's still there to he, this day. He like, has an albino bat that was in there, the albino which bat. was interesting. Yep, and. Um, we forgot to say, so um, going back out by the pool area, they actually show you his old boat. They've actually got it oh, up yeah, there. The it's preserved. Yeah. Yep. And uh, it's an all wooden boat, but it looks, uh, it's impeccably maintained. Great condition. Great yeah. condition for that. And then as you exit that, they have these four little headstones. Oh, right. And they were yep. for the ducks. They had four ducks, which apparently they loved to death. And when they died, they actually have like a little mini yep. graveyard uh, for them. So it was really interesting to see. Mm -hmm. You got to see his bedroom. Yep. You know, they still have a lot of his stuff, original stuff, on display. Yeah, a lot of the furniture. Even like where we were, like the courtyard where people would sit outside. Um, the Like the metal chairs yep. were original. All like, original there, yep. yeah. And it was just crazy. And then they show you, they're like, okay, where do you think... Uh, in this house, uh, Hemingway Road. And we're like, we don't know. Is it the library? Is it the main room? Is it a guest room? I was thinking maybe it's in the bathroom. Maybe he was like right. a big toilet writer. I don't know. <laughs> Turns out it was in uh, the guest bedroom. And uh, he just had the world's first standing desk, which yes. was just a bookshelf that he had his typewriter on. And that's where he wrote. He had a little uh, rug, probably to keep his feet warm, oh, yeah, his feet yeah, warm. the tiny little rug. And he stood yeah. and he wrote. Yep. And that's where he wrote a majority of his works. So Including we, the old man in the sea. Yep. Which, so we got a chance to see that, <laughs> which was awesome. Yeah. Um, and uh, then they took us to the fishing village where he would take that boat yes. that was on display. Um, definitely not a fishing village like you're thinking. Definitely not. Yeah. But along the way, we found out so many fascinating things. For instance, every pot of land is on a one-year lease from the government. Yeah. And you are required to sell 80 to 90% of what you produce, you produce to the right. government. There is no ifs, there is no, uh, uh, you know, there is no ifs, ands, or buts. You mm -hmm. must do that. And if you get a cow and it produces milk, same thing. Got to sell that milk to the government. And you cannot yeah. kill that cow without the government's permission. That's Even true. if you yourself are starving. Which is wild uh, to see and hear I know. and experience. Yeah, just even the fish, right? Yep. The fish they yep. bring in. And they said in that fishing village that they have uh, people that greet you every time that you, yeah. you know, dock back up from there? the government yeah. going, well, <laughs> let's, looks like you had a good day. Let's yeah. count them and, uh, and go from there. But imagine that. Imagine working for 80%. Uh, being sold back to the government at reduced rates. It's not even at market oh, sure. rates. Right. And then you can make your living or feed your family off the remaining 20%. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. What did um, you think of the fishing village? You went up on the little, uh, what was that, like a little uh, tower, I yeah, guess? Yeah, yep. I, I was thinking I could go, actually go into the building. That's what, you know, when we went up there. But, um, yeah, so to me, like, you know. You gotta remember, I'm used to uh, being around Gloucester, Massachusetts, the quote unquote oldest fishing port in America. And this was <laughs> this was no Gloucester because oh, there were no fishing vessels. Yeah, yeah, definitely I'm used not. To what seeing you're like thinking. lobster boats everywhere, you know. Um, what but about, what about the power plant that they had sent over oh, from yeah. Turkey? That's on a boat. Yeah, there was a right. There was a power plant. It was like kind of like a power plant barge. It was a barge, exactly. Yeah. yeah. To run um, a power plant, and they need that because their power plant is broken. Yeah, and they don't have the, the <laughs> and it's parts. It's not getting fixed. Yeah, yeah, they have the part. They don't have the parts to fix it. So right. it was like, okay, well, we're renting this from Turkey, and uh, as a result, I think they had some uh, uh, oil vessels or some vessels to collect the yep. oil in the area and stuff like that. So Crazy. thank thank you, Turkey, for bringing the power plant over so that we don't have rolling blackouts here thank or goodness. anything. Because like he that. said previously they, they would have like five hours on and five hours off. In the and remote then, areas. And yeah. then in Havana, they would they were at least nice enough to tell you, this is when we're shutting the power off for two hours. Yeah. And here's when it comes back on. And every day, there was oh. a two-hour uh, power outage. So which charge just, up your phone now, people. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know. yeah it, uh, it was quite an adventure. Uh, for sure. So uh, Hemingway's place was absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. We asked for an afternoon uh, um, an afternoon tour because we're afternoon people. Uh, mm -hmm. But the place closed at three o'clock. So like you know, 
We've been in the car for an hour. Oh, you know. I didn't catch that. We've I been walking all now. the way around, and the place is closing up as we're finishing up. And we're like, we want some water. Oh, yeah, we're dying for water. water. Like, and they're oh, like, oh, no, the store's closed. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. Well, it's cool that you guys didn't bring any water for us either, right. knowing that we would be in this hot box of a vehicle. But... We digress, right? Uh, then we go to the fishing village, and then they take us to the Florida bar. The, yeah. Now, every single person we've talked to, encountered, come across, taken a tour with, whatever, has told us about this Florida bar and how it's Hemingway's old haunt. It's where they made the daiquiri for the first time. I guess yep. in the other location, they made the mojito for the first time, right? But this is a historic, uh, you can't believe it bar. It's going to be absolutely amazing. You've got to go in there and check it out. We walk in and it's a uh, what? Very crowded for one. Tourist trap. Yeah. Oh, major tourist trap. Tourist yeah. trap. <laughs> I mean severely crowded our guide goes oh no it gets much more crowded than this yeah he was like this is nothing I'm yeah like, he's seriously? like you're <laughs> actually in a uh, low tide time yeah. as far as people so you're good to go and uh you can tell they really care about their daiquiris because that's the only thing they make oh, and yeah. they basically just make them uh they just have all the glasses there yeah. uh i mean it's just you know it's bullshit you go there you get your photo with hemingway statue which we did yeah you know then you then you get your get daiquiri photo. Then you get the fuck out. Yeah. That's that's pretty much what, and, what it and was. And our guide even said that there's other places that have much better daiquiri. Yeah, he was like, the yeah. daiquiris here yeah. suck. And we're like, you know what? We're going to go ahead and pay for our own waters here. Right. You know. Well, you would have thought paying $180 uh, for a taxi and a tour guide, that, that would have entitled us to two free daiquiris at the end. That's what I thought. Apparently I thought we were not. Getting the, the daiquiris were included. Apparently that was not included maybe I, maybe I misread in it. the <laughs> tour that we booked on our own. Did I mention, by the way, you want to book all these through Airbnb ahead of time so that when there's shit like this, you can leave a comment and be like, hey, guess what? And, and then uh, because we befriended our, uh, our uh, tour guide, yep. I'm like, all right, now, now you tell me. You saw what we paid. Now you tell me how that gets split. He gets... $15 out of the 180 The taxi guy gets $50. By the way, gas per liter here, 30 euros per liter. I'm sorry, uh, 30 pesos per liter. And, and even the guy said, yeah. the gas here is very cheap. It's the maintenance that is hard right. on the vehicles. Yep. Like they, when they need tires, they literally have to go to somebody and say, we need to order some tires. They mark up the price like 15%. Yeah. Then they buy them off Amazon and have them shipped over here. I mean, that's very expensive. That's really what they have to do. So the maintenance part of it. So, and then the rest goes to the tour guide, uh, not the tour guide, yeah. but whoever had the Airbnb listing right. for the experience. So you're thinking, you know, and, and again, if we had not paid that extra 60 bucks to have our own private tour, they'd have shoved a third person in on that thing uh, between me and Sue, and there wasn't a room for another body. No, especially with not. The, it's like, yeah, not a would, lot of room in the back seat of that car. That would not work. It's yeah. a two-seater for a reason. Um, but it just goes to show you the entrepreneurial spirit is, uh, is alive and well. Mm -hmm. And just like every tourist trap I've ever been to, their whole goal is to separate you from your money as quickly as possible. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and cool. do it in the scummiest of uh, way, you know. And it just, yeah, I, I, we, we, we went to the place our guide recommended. And I didn't even like it. It was okay, but it had it had a band. It had a band. A full band yep. that was loud as shit. They played like four songs. Then they walked around with the money asking for tips, and then they left. Show over. Gone. Yeah, Finito. It was quick. Done. Yeah. So we uh, we do our thing, we do that, and then Sue goes, D do you want to eat around here? And I'm like, I want to get the fuck out of here as quickly as possible. Yeah, we, so, like, we like it in uh, non-tourist. Yeah, uh, look, stay out of the tourist areas. Yeah. One, you don't have to be on alert uh, all the time. Uh, and two, you yeah. can trust people at their word a little bit more, I right. feel like, it, it, out here. Um, you know, and, and they're not, they're, they want your money, but they're not out to get it underhandedly, yeah, I would say. Yeah, and the, this neighborhood or obviously is so strings. much different. It's just... Like that little restaurant we keep going to, it's clearly not a touristy. It's like where the locals go. It's just nice and relaxing. Well, and, I mean, you, know. you paid a dollar for a coffee. I yep. paid two fifty for a beer. We gave them five bucks, and they were more than happy. I yeah. mean, that's that's the thing. So then, then we're like, yeah, let's get the fuck out of here. So so we've learned, right? Don't get in the car without understanding the price ahead of time. So we go to the first guy, and he's like, I'm not for hire. Someone's already hired me. I'm just sitting here waiting. I can't take you. I'm like, I understand that. 
how much. Also, I will say this, we learned this. If it has a B in the license plate here, it's uh, the, the car is owned by the taxi company. Um, oh. And if it has a G, it's owned by the government or it's a government official or it's a, a military or police yeah. vehicle. So we were like, you know what? We got we got bamboozled in the uh, the old car last night. Let's yeah. go to one of these. So we go. The first guy goes, "Yep, sorry, I can't take it all." And we're like, "We get it. How much?" He's like, oh, "I'd be about ten dollars." And we're like, "Okay, that's not bad." Yep. So then we walk two cars up. We ask the guy the same thing, who looked like we were inconveniencing by hiring him, and he was like, five dollars, five hundred pesos, basically yeah. five dollars. And we're like, "Well done, yes, amigo. Yeah. We'll we'll do that." And you know what? <laughs> Did he get us right to our door? No. Did he get us within a block of it? Yes. Was I willing to? To walk a block to save twenty five dollars. Yeah, uh, well, yeah here we go. This is fine. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, so we did that, and now we're back in the Airbnb, and we're just recovering uh, from an amazing week and an amazing time. It's oh, been and I, I did try one of my cigars, and it tasted delicious. Oh, yeah. yeah, I had to crack <laughs> it open because right. I wanted to make sure they weren't like, uh, um, you know, like. Um, uh, uh, Filled with uh, yeah, like like pens or like well, yeah. what am I thinking? Like tampon, you know the thing, the applicators or whatever. Yeah. Where it's just like okay, I want to make sure there's actual cigars in here. So there were. So uh, so I was like, well, now I got to smoke one, make sure it's not going to explode on me. <laughs> and uh, and it was delicious. Yeah. So uh, for a two dollar Cuban cigar, I'm very happy uh, with my purchase so far. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean it was just you know. I, you guys always have to understand, this is a comedy podcast, right? So I could come here and just be like, look, we had a good time, which we did. We had a great tour guide and a, a great taxi guy. We did. We saw Hemingway's thing. But, of course, we have to jazz it up a little bit for you all and right. tell you the things that, that are uh, learning lessons or aggravation. Like, I wouldn't do that tour again knowing what we know now. Well, I would just hire a driver. Right. And say, take us to Hemingway's house, pay the fifteen uh, dollars to get in yep. there, and that would have been pretty much the Hemingway tour. Would that have been we did. a hell, hell of a lot cheaper. Yeah, 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 it would have been, but that's okay. Again, these are things that you don't know that we didn't know, so we got to test it out, and then we got to take the hit to the pocketbook and the chin, and then tell you, hey, try to avoid this if forever yeah. uh, you can. So, uh, no more uh, hot rod rides for us. I think we're good on uh, the old one cars. One and done. One, one and, and done. done. Yep. yep. Uh, only official taxis uh, or only taxis that we agree upon the price before getting into. Yeah. But we say the fuck out of the tourist areas. Uh, the middle by the capital and all that, stay away. Go. You can go visit, just have your head on a swivel and be prepared to be right. told every sob story known to man. Uh, you know, and again, I get it. These people, this is how they make their money. To them, this, this is their survival. I totally get it. But if you don't want... A, a tourist experience, you got to stay out of the tourist areas and you got to really Wise live on the economy. Wise words. Like yep. e even today, like we're going to finish this up and when we get hungry, we're just going to walk around. Someplace and, local. And to, look uh, for a place that's just like within two or three blocks of where we're at. Yeah. Hopefully one that, maybe even one that we haven't been to before. If not, we'll go back to our favorite little place. But, yep. um, you know, just to enjoy and try that. But I will say the place that we went to, not only did they have a band, and not only did they have some nice drinks and some beautiful tasting rum. They did it. By the way, Sue visit. is probably 100% a rum drinker oh, now. I'm definitely a rum drinker now. But Sue, what else did they have there? They had a charcuterie board. And? Well, board. And they had fucking bread. Yes. <laughs> I've been dying for bread. Have you ever seen a feral cat catch yeah. its prey? Because that's what happened when they brought out the bread roll for it us. It was like long and warm and like... We're now, talking about bread don't, here, folks. Don't expect... Yeah, we're talking about bread. Um, if you go out to dinner... There's no bread. Yeah. You know, not it, like in America no. where I'm like, bring me the bread, people. Yeah, there's no free <laughs> bread. There's no butter. I think we got some mayonnaise tartar Definitely sauce. Definitely no butter, there. yeah. Yeah, but it was big. It was juicy. Yes. It was flavorful. We said, mm -hmm. yes, fantastic. I'm so and then excited. Sue proceeded to make mini sandwiches the whole time yep. with bread, uh, and with meat, and cheese. And I told her when I was over in Paris, quit bragging, uh, <laughs> they, uh, uh, I, we, we did a charcuterie or we did like a walking tour. And one of the places was a charcuterie board. And I was like, oh, so do you put bread and cheese and, uh, you know, and uh, meat <laughs> together? And she looked at me quizzically. She goes, are you making a sandwich? And I was like, no, I'm asking for the charcuterie board. She goes, no, we don't do that. And I was like, oh, shit, I didn't realize. <laughs> I was breaking Why customs. Doesn't everybody do that? But you know what we did? We ordered bread and we got extra bread and oh, we fucking made our sandwiches good. and we just sung God Bless America every time we took a bite. I was we said, in this heaven. Is, 
This is what freedom ringing is to us. We yep. have bread, we have cheese, we have meat. Plus, mind you, we hadn't really eaten or had anything to drink. I mean, I think, you know, we were, we were thirsty. For sure. Oh, we had gotten the water. We, got, we were so thirsty. We actually ordered a bottle of water at the Hemingway bar. Yeah. The guy's like, you want a daiquiri? I'm like, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> Keep that fucking daiquiri, uh, that, that one millionth daiquiri of the day away from me. Yeah. We need some agua. We were Thank so parched. You. Yes. But, um, so, we, yeah, we, you're right. We hadn't really eaten. We were like, oh, yep. we'll just get a little. We'll just get a little kibitz. We'll get a little little something to nosh on. And then, uh, you know, Sue's like, all right, let's get some rum. All right, let's get some bread. And we're like, oh, we're making this an adventure. Yes. Yeah. So, and it was a great time. It was good. I'm glad we went. Uh, I'm glad we got to experience it to tell you guys you're missing nothing uh, if you don't go down there. And if you do go down there again, you know, just expect people are going to come up to you. I mean, we were at the Capitol building and some guy came from across the street. Where are you from? Do you need a taxi? And it's like, get away from us. Yeah, and, and there's definitely a lot of that. As a there. dumb American, you can always play a dumb American and be like, I don't understand what you're saying. And when they can't try to engage, you just go, no, thank you, and just walk away, right? And they'll follow you, but they'll eventually stop when they realize they're not getting your attention Yeah, yeah, anymore. that's one good thing. Yeah. yeah. Like, so, I don't understand. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't understand. Sue, let's go. Let's keep walking. Let's do this. So what were your thoughts overall on the day? I mean, I I will say as soon, as soon as he pointed to that vehicle without the um, the open air vehicle, I'm like, oh, Tim is gonna freaking kill me <laughs> because we had just spent the day at the pool. I'm like, no, we need air conditioning. But you know, once we got going, it wasn't terrible. Like there was air going. And yeah. It wasn't in some of the ride. You know, there was like trees in the shade and and whatnot. But um, it but wasn't we, the worst. And, and it wasn't it, the worst. And but, the thing is, like. By that point, you're on the trip. You're on the yeah. adventure, so you can totally be pissy about it and be like, yeah. God, you know, it's like, of course I would want it differently, but if this is what we're given, then this right. is what we're going to go and we're going to enjoy. Yeah, and again, the whole, like, go down to the fishing village, obviously, like, I was like, this is not a fishing, it's like going to the water, you know, but that, that's fine. Um, and, and then the last thing at the Hemingway bar, I really did think it included a drink. Maybe I misread it, but I could swear it included a drink, but whatever, um, I think by that time, we were certainly like, okay, I've had enough. Let's get out of here. Yeah, of well, thing. and again, it was only a two-hour tour. Yeah. A two-hour tour. But, yeah, uh, yeah we, it was like, and it's not that I wouldn't like a daiquiri, but I'm like, dude, I don't, you know. Yeah. Like, like I, I, it's hard to explain. But basically, just imagine a daiquiri making station and everything you need, you know, to serve it in, and that's all they do. And it's like, oh, hi, welcome. Here's your yeah, daiquiri. Yeah, and again, Here's it was daiquiri. way too touristy. I was more than happy to get out of there, too. Yeah. I was like, okay, I've seen enough, had enough. And you're like, Let's well, how do, how'd you know it was too touristy? There were too many people that looked yeah. like us there. Yeah. That's how I would say it. Every every tourist spot, you know, and this and that. Yeah, it just was like. I will say that our guide, Manuel, I believe his name was. Um, I mean, he was very nice. And amazing. if it wasn't for, he really kind of made it. He was amazing. And it was so nice to talk to him. And, and so was our uh, our taxi guy. Yep. He was great and fun. He was very funny. And, yep. and, and that's really, you know, I'm happy, you know, that uh, we got those guys. They were great fun. They were very informative. Not just about Hemingway, but he was like, look, I'll, you know, I've been in Cuba my whole life. You ask me any question about yep. anything and, yep. and we'll tell you. And we love Ivan. He's amazing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think he gets about every third word we say. Yeah. We get about every sixth word he says. Exactly. So sometimes we would ask him questions and he would just be like, ah, and just not answer. Right, right. And at first I was like, okay, is this like a government secret thing he's not <laughs> allowed to answer? But I just don't think he understood us. There was uh, definitely a big difference. I mean, the guy we were with today spoke perfect English. I yes. mean, he was, it was great. So yeah. and, and do you remember how much difference. he got paid for that job? Um, let's see. Let me think. Let me think. Uh, was it 35 35 or 40 dollars yeah. a month and he said rent is a hundred dollars even in like the cheapest places right. so most families you have the mother like for him he's like i live with my mother and my grandmother yeah and he's like that's just what happens because in cuba you can only own one house in the city yep. and one house on the sea and, and that's i remember it. his mother he said his mother was an attorney yes by the way she made between there is no like private attorneys right. or criminal law an attorney he, for the government every attorney is works for the government yeah. everyone and she made between i can't even believe this 25 and 29 dollars a month yeah right. 
But he did say, when you work for the government, the higher you go up in the position, the more more perks you get. So at some point, they give you a car. Like, she was part of a, I forget, somewhere else on the island. But she was, like, the director. And she had two vehicles mm-hmm. and a nice house and all that. But when they move you to Cuba and you're not that anymore, then you don't get those benefits uh, anymore, right. for sure. So right. it was just, it's just an eye-opening experience. For sure, um, yeah. To understand, like, how they live and how they survive there. And, and you're like, well, why don't they come to America? Well, you can pay $9,000, I think is what he said, was the yeah. cost to go basically from Nicaragua and then Nicaragua into Mexico right. and then Mexico into there. Yep. And by the way, that's due up front. You must pay all of that money. Mm-hmm. Um, or you have to be sponsored by an American citizen, um, and they just have to show proof of financial solvency. And right. then uh, basically, but basically, if I did that, I'd be on the hook for two years for this guy. And if he got in trouble, then I would get in trouble. That's yes. how he kind of made it sound yeah. like. So I was like, oh, shit. So, uh, you know. I think I understand a little bit more about the dudes that have the mail order brides and how that all oh, yeah. happens. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know. You did say you could marry. Uh, oh yes, I like could marry a, yes. a Cuban girl, and yep. then we could have a house here, or right. she could come back to the U.S. as my wife. Yeah. So I'm gonna find me a single so you girl get that, going for you. that has a house here, yeah. and be like, okay, you come with me to America. We'll come vacation here in Cuba. Could we do that? But that also makes me wonder. Yeah. Like, okay, so we're in this place. We're paying, I don't mind saying, it's like 500 bucks for the eight days here. Yep. A great deal, by the way, because that new hotel, what did he say? They started at $200. $200. We're like, yeah. uh, Sue was like, oh, what is those rooms about? $200? She goes, yes, yes, to start. And they to could start. go up to $800. Yep. Right. And we were just like, what like, Oh, jeez. <laughs> fuck, I could not believe that. But so imagine what the rent must be on this place. And I, I bet we're paying the entire month's rent oh, or multiple sure. months' rent. Yeah, you would think. With yeah. it, which, again, it's fine. I'd much rather do this than, mm-hmm. you know, uh, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it, I mean, like I said, you know, we realized when we got into this, hey, this I don't think this is going to go exactly how we thought it would in our minds, but we made the best of it. We had a great time. It was amazing to learn mm-hmm. about uh, Ernest Hemingway, who I did not know took his own life. His father took his own life, right. uh, but Ernest did it because he was in such pain. Um, but here's a little trivia if you're ever on Jeopardy. When they ask you who won the first uh, fishing tournament in all of Cuba, you can say Ernest Hemingway mm-hmm. because he did. And when they go, and who presented him the award, you can say Fidel Castro because he did, and they got a photo of it. They got a young Ernest Hemingway and a yep. young Fidel Castro, uh, you know, uh, enjoying uh, the seas together. So... Just crazy to learn that life. Uh, definitely going to have to pick up a book. Uh, they, they were saying he got the Pulitzer Prize and the Nobel Peace Prize uh, for his the writing. The in the scene. I mean, okay. that's just crazy to me that, that you could write a book that's so good that the Nobel Peace Prize is like, we got you. Well, maybe one of your books will win the Nobel mm, Peace Prize. I don't Prize. think those Kindle books are going to so? quite go uh, <laughs> to that depth. There's that's for sure. There's always hope, Tim. There's yeah. always hope. And, you know, what I think you could find around here, you'd have to ask, and it probably costs a pretty penny, but I bet you could find functional typewriters still. Oh, yeah. You know what? You're right. Yeah. <laughs> We've seen quite a few as um, decor as in the decor. restaurants. Yeah. I would yes. love a small little Corona, I think they are, uh, or maybe Corning uh, travel typewriter. Yeah. And I would love even more the ones that uh, Churchill had made exclusively for him because he hated the sound of the buttons. So they were the silent, the world's first silent typewriter. But they specifically commissioned them for Churchill. Oh, like we a silent that. manual one. We saw that when we visited his bunker, and they were they were talking about oh, it. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. See, I've taken Sue on so many trips. She's confused. I know, like, which what trip country, was that? What country oh I'm God. talking around, right? Yes, <laughs> ultimate first world problem. But uh, just, just amazing to see the the um, you know see where people live, to see the spectacle, uh, you know, and and to get an insider's view. Like they were saying, well, out here the farmers, what they do is they set up these little stands and they sell their leftover produce, and then out here they have a, a bread and a pork dish out here and they sell those to all the people and they yep. love them out here and all that and then they go and you should never have one they're terrible and it's like oh well okay at least we know <laughs> thanks so, for the warning yeah it's almost like they have these like little stands 
on kind of a like a secondary highway, but it was a yeah. it was a busy road. Like Just imagine what, going down this highway. What I would refer to as a highway back home. And also, uh, one of the parts here we saw is like the main hub for the buses going all over. Oh, uh, yeah. The country. I was busy. And, I mean, there were hundreds of people oh, just yeah. you get queued wait up line, folks. just to queue up, just to get on yes, the damn bus. that's the big word around here, queuing up. So let's talk about overall travel trips because we're coming to the end. Tomorrow's our last full day in country. Yep. What would you Aww. say some of your big travel tips are? Let's see. Uh, I think if I was going to do this again, I would say for sure – Probably consider getting that VPN. Well, let's do this. Right. Let's talk about what we did right first. We think, hey, this this we did this right. Like, okay. I would say this Airbnb, oh, we did sure. it right. So I would say stay out of the area. Definitely yep. get a, an Airbnb. Um, I wouldn't stay at a hotel unless you're unless unless you want to go full tourist. Right. Mode. If right. you do, then stay at a hotel. You're yeah, going to have sure. a great time and yep. and wait till you have to buy Wi-Fi. But yeah. Um, so I think we did really good there. Yeah. I think bringing enough, more than enough money with us Definitely bring helped. more enough cash yeah. or, you know, yep, for and sure. And American dollars are taken here. So are yeah. euros. So uh, we did that well. Um, what else did, do you Once think? Once again, I overpacked. I don't need a pair of jeans or a jacket or anything. No. It's hot. No. So <laughs> yeah. you don't need any kind of anything like that. Any formal wear or anything like that. No, yeah, yeah very casual. Yeah. We've been in shorts and T-shirts the whole time now, here. Now, I will say as a lady, I did pack my blow dryer. Yes. Even though, you know, if you're the kind of gal who likes a blow dryer, no, I, I didn't think there'd be a blow dryer here. So that's just me. Yep. Oh, and also as a lady, maybe bring a little extra toilet paper. Yeah, Sue's <laughs> big on the toilet paper. Look, bring a couple rolls with you yeah. or bring some wipes or bring something. Yeah, bring something. You're going to find yourselves in more than one bathroom yeah. where uh, there's no toilet paper right. for you. And you're just like, oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, um, sorry. Back to travel tips. Yeah. So, back, back you know, again with the... Um, the VPN, you the mentioned. VPN, yeah. The v oh, and then obviously, I, so, so I did download that. The Maps.me. Maps.me. Yeah, me. Maps, which has been great. And, uh, folks, don't just download the app. you got to go specifically to the country you want because yes. you have to download a map there. That's right. Of, of the area. But right. that has helped us and saved That's us been great. a ton. When, and it works for walking. It works for driving. It works for everything there. Yep. I would say whatever apps you think you might need, taxi apps, stuff like that, download them ahead of time. Get them verified. Make sure that yep. you're, you're, they're fully operational. Uh, whatever uh, whatever that may be. And obviously, we, if you do go the Airbnb route, you definitely need to make sure they have good Wi-Fi. Because that's been like, we come back here, that's the only way we can like check our texts, and what, unless you want to pay big bucks to your yeah. cell phone company. Yeah, and it's not even great Wi-Fi. Yeah, it's, so, it's not even that great, but, but it's it, been helpful. But it's better than nothing. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's been a lifesaver having it here included because we went when, yesterday when we, I was feeling froggy. I was like, look, we just swam in their damn pool. I'm sure they'll just give us the Wi-Fi yeah. code. We'll just move into the third floor. They won't even realize it. So we're like, how do we get the Wi-Fi? And she goes, you go to the telephone over there and you buy it. And yeah. I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, you have to buy the Wi-Fi. Even in these nice hotels, right. you have to buy. Yeah, that was surprising. And Sue was like, oh, what is it like, you know, $20 for the day? I'm like, I think it's $20 an hour. It's yeah, ouch. Everybody here has Pass. said how expensive right. the Wi-Fi has. Right. And do not depend. One thing I read everywhere was like, oh, you can get by with Wi-Fi. You can at your home location. But there's not free public Wi-Fi no. anywhere where we were able. It's not like once, at all, folks. Once we're out... We were out. Yeah. We, you know. Don't expect to use your phone once you're out. Unless no. you're paying, obviously, the right. running and all that good stuff like that. Right. Yeah. And also, don't don't expect to be able to... You can send, like, text, but photos, tough to go yeah. through. Yeah. You know, the shit that you just don't expect to happen uh, happens. So um, so that's some tips. The, they Here in Cuba, they do have a credit card or a card oh, that you can right. put money on. That you can buy at the airport, I think. Which we didn't do. It hasn't inhibited yeah. us, but there are some places that... They probably would. So you could yep. possibly look at putting a few hundred dollars on something like that. I would tell you also to book all your Airbnbs in advance. So I didn't mm -hmm. book them all because I was like, oh, we'll get here. We'll be able to book them just like I have everywhere else. Right. But you can't when uh, you're in Cuba against the United States government, all that good stuff. So 
Now, I know that you downloaded Google Translate. Yes. So that has been, and you're able to use it offline. Yes. Yes, so that's another thing. Yeah, so I'm it, not able to use mine But offline. also, you want to make sure you have it downloaded to where you can do the photo part. Because we can yes. type in the menu word by yes. word, but we can't have it do a photo and then it translates right. to Right, so that's, whatever. that's definitely, um, you know, been helpful as far as menus. Um, I think some of the nicer restaurants have the menus in English as well. But yes, the place we went to last night yep. had it in, in English. And uh, another little uh, tip for you, you can tell you're in a touristo area when uh, it's in English and all the prices are in American dollars. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. because uh, that just lets you know. They're yeah. like, oh, we know what you brought. We know what you're spending. That's perfectly fine with right. us. Right. Uh, I mean, I think we've been doing pretty darn good, considering. Oh, you know? I mean, uh, considering <laughs> the first day when we got lost coming back, <laughs> and we, yeah. yeah, we walked around our house probably four blocks yeah. and started freaking out. And, oh my God, how are we gonna get there? And we, oh, you know, that's the other thing with the, with the addresses. They don't. You just use like one, yeah. two, three Main Street, folks. Nope. You, you have to know which the the, the streets, streets in between. In between, yeah. Because everybody will ask that. So and, we're in know. between four and six, yeah. and then we show them the address. Right. That's all we add. It's between yeah. four and six, and they're able to get us here. Definitely uh, going to get used to that. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, let's see. What else would uh, would you say? Uh, I think part of the, the uh, best part of having the Airbnb is you have a host, typically, that you can reach out to. And, and she has helpful. been a super sweetheart yep. and has gotten us taxis. She's even exchanged money for exchanged us. Exchanged money. Got us taxis. Yep. Um, oh, and by the way, did you notice we've never been asked out here if we need to exchange money out on the streets? Right. We had like three people ask us. In that little block area. And everyone says, do not exchange money on the streets. In that little what area? In, where we were today. I had three people oh, ask oh, me, yeah, yeah. oh, money exchange? It's like, no, oh, no, no, yeah, no, no. Yeah. yeah. So so that's the benefit of having an Airbnb host is that, you know, they exchange it at a much better rate than the yep. bank. They don't, you don't have to wait at line at the bank. Uh, and uh, and they're super helpful. I mean, she's been very, very. Oh, she's very, been great. Yeah, it's been, it's been um, phenomenal. I would and recommend. And also, I will note that at our Airbnb, um, she provides water and beer, which, you know, not really doing the beer, but the waters are big. So, you know, they say, supposedly don't drink the water. I think the guy today was saying, don't yeah, like just, right. you know, but, um, I mean, I think that's been great. Yeah. You oh, know? yeah. So you want to look for that. Um, let's see what else. Because don't be, don't be surprised. Like here in the main room, there is no TV or any type yeah, no of anything. TV. It's just like, um, we, we honestly hang out here for like when we get home after dinner, we hang out, surf a little bit, and then it's like, all right, I'm going to bed. I think yeah, that's, that's I the other say, reason. This is the longest I've been without television. Well, I think that's <laughs> a, another reason why we're sleeping so good is there's nothing to distract you. It's yes. like, all right, well, I can be bored or I can go to bed. Right. And, yeah. Right. And yep. I mean, even me, who's like a go to sleep at like 5 a.m. type guy, yeah. 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, we're like, hey, all right, I'm tired. Let's go. Uh, and um, yeah, so I think that's huge. Um, kind in, of knowing what you're getting In addition to into. the air conditioning and room darkening, uh, yes, this place is this like, place. you can sleep until noon if you want I, to. <laughs> I don't want to leave it strictly because of the blackout room yes. and the blackout shades and the ice cold oh, air so conditioning. Cold. Yes, yes. I mean, it's just yeah. uh, been phenomenal. Uh, let's see, Tur uh, tourist stuff. Uh, I mean, again, you know, you got to understand your Airbnb stuff is going to be a little tourist still. And, that, and again, that, there's nothing wrong with that. Just kind of understand it going in. Like, I enjoyed our walking tour from a value standpoint more than I did today. But it's not mm -hmm. that I didn't enjoy today's Hemingway tour, you know. And right. it was good because we didn't go on the tour on Saturday. So we didn't have that expense. So I felt yep. more than comfortable oh, saying, right, right, right. Yep. you know what, let's go ahead and book a private uh, tour for today, yep. right? It's Sue's day, so let's make sure she yep. gets the full experience, which we did, and uh, and we had a great time with that. Um, you may not be able to find some of your staples, uh, you know, like anything, that, like you said, today's the first day we saw bread on the menu, like you could, right. you could even order. I think I've had one Coke here, uh, but yeah. you're not getting Diet Coke. Uh, you're not getting, you know, and, and the other thing is this, uh, they may have something on the menu today, but tomorrow it's gone. Oh, right. Like when we went today, yep. 
And I was like, great, tacos and um, what was the other thing they had? Oh, quesadilla. Quesadilla, the, the, the two things I love, which they don't have. They yeah, and the guy today. comes up, he goes, we only don't have yeah. two things, <laughs> tacos and quesadilla. And we're like, what the fuck, man, yeah, you know? come on now. And we're like, okay, we'll take a cerveza. And he goes, oh, we don't have any in-country beers here. And it's like, why wouldn't you, you know? But, yeah. but we've also been to our favorite spots where it's like one day it's you get like today. I got a beer and a cold mug. Yeah. The other day we you got it off. You never know what you're going to get. We got it off a <laughs> He's tap. He's just going to roll with it. Yeah. And all the menus from this place were handwritten um, that our favorite place to buy here because the prices had increased. Right. And they didn't even print them off. They were just all handwritten. So it was very interesting uh, to kind of see that. Mm-hmm. What yeah. other t- travel tips are Let's you going to tell your friends? Um... So they use regular electrical cords, which I didn't quite know, but that's great. Yep. So you don't have to, you know. Yeah. You definitely want to make sure what the power situation is as far as you're going to yep. need an adapter or whatever. Um, we were fortunate enough that this has all regular power, so hasn't been an issue. We've been able to charge our phones just fine, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and anything like that. Um, I would recommend like a fanny pack or something like that, a cross oh, actual, sure. yep. just to make it easy for you to travel around yep. and carry what you, your necessities there. Uh, Definitely bring sneakers. You're going to be walking a lot. Walking. Oh, comfortable oh, shoes. Oh, how many steps do you think oh, we're taking yeah. today? Oh, Sue's got to go. Get, go. Go. Set, go. Set okay. it down gently. And uh, yeah. All right. And uh, and while she does that, I'll tell you. And I'll, I've said this yes. till I'm blue in the face. Uh, and I don't care because it's served me well. Overly polite. Overly apologetic. Those things can get you out of 99% uh, situations. And again, in heavy tourist areas, they know you're a tourist and you don't mean any harm. Uh, And as long as you maintain that status, they'll be more than happy to uh, treat you with uh, at least some kindness and decency and respect. All right. She's coming around the mountain when she comes. All right. I have not. But did you look? You already looked, right? Okay. All right. I looked. I'm going to go... I'm going to go 9,800 steps. You would be um, definitely far wrong. Because don't forget, we were in the vehicle quite a bit today. Yes. Yes. So way too high? Way too high. I thought so. I was like, we didn't really walk that much. Okay. I'm going to go 5,000 steps. Very close. 5,509. 5,509. That's not bad. That's halfway to 10,000 steps, which apparently you're supposed to get every day as an American, which I don't understand how that happens in a civilized world. I mean, we're doing this because we're required to walk, (laughs) not because we want to, right? Yeah. Yeah. When you get back to America, I'm never walking again. I'm going to let these legs atrophy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going right back to my bad habits. Don't think this, I'm coming back a changed man like Gandhi. We did a lot of walking. Yeah. Yeah. I got my years fixed on the walking, so I think I'm, uh, I think I'm good there, but. But uh, um, let's see. I'm trying to think if there's any other travel tips that I can think of. If there are, we'll leave in the comments or anything like that. It's been a phenomenal trip. Uh, I am so glad that I just booked the trip and then figured everything out, else, uh, everything else uh, later. I never in my life would have ever thought that I had come to Havana, uh, Cuba. And we've only seen Havana. And that's the I thing. Know. There's so that's much more so of this much country more to see. that you could really spend a month here and you Easily. would you would and spend it in different areas and you would have totally different uh, situations, locations, different right. things like that. And don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to kind of put stuff out there and be like, I don't know what's going to happen, but let's try it. Let's see it. And also it's okay to be like, yeah, I don't want to do that. You know, like, yeah. like they were like, you want to go to a nightclub? We're like, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> no, under no circumstances. Yeah, like our Airbnb host wrote this list of restaurants and in the bottom nightclubs. Yeah, and we're like, you know. we're good. Yeah, we're yeah. not going to go there. Right. No, no thank you. That's not the type of trip that we're on. So uh, we hope that you guys have enjoyed this trip, uh, following along with us as much uh, as we've enjoyed sharing with you. We got one more full day, so we'll do probably one more podcast uh, to bring it all uh, around before we uh, pack up and get out of this joint. Uh, this has been a phenomenal trip. I don't know how it you felt about it. Also. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, and it's an amazing experience that not many people can relate to, and mm-hmm. we'll have stories uh, for days, not only for the podcast, but also uh, friends and family back home. Mm-hmm. I- I'm never going to complain about the roads uh, or having to <laughs> wait know. 15 minutes to get dinner or even low-speed internet. Uh, all of those things I will just magically yeah, be okay with. you guys think you're potholes? Wait till you see these potholes. Yeah, let me oh, tell you. <laughs> on the highways, no less. So you're yeah. driving, it's like you're swerving to avoid, and you're like, what the fuck? Was something in the road? And they're like, oh, pothole, yeah. pothole. You're like, oh. 
<laughs> I get it. So yeah. thanks for coming along. We uh, we didn't eat our desserts last night, but we're going to fix that problem right now. And uh, we'll tell you about it hopefully on the next podcast. Right. So if we remember, uh, tomorrow we don't know what we're going to do. It's probably going to be a chill day. Uh, you know, I, I, I envision one, maybe one more trip to La Casa de Habano, maybe, to get our final. I feel like we, we yeah. Final supplies, you for know. Sure. And uh, and just enjoy our time there. Uh, and uh, maybe maybe become rum fans. Uh, again, I'm loving the know. rum. Boy, we, sign me up. We may just have to go do that tonight. We yeah. May, yeah, we may feel froggy. You know, we're so used to now, That's how bold we are now. We're like, we know exactly where it's at. We'll figure it yep, out. We'll go right. from there. So, again, guys, thanks so much for listening. We got one more in us before we go. Uh, we hope that you've enjoyed it. I'll only know if you like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Did you like it? How we broke it down by day. Should, would you like it a different way? How you know? How can we make this is, enjoyable know, experience folks. for you so we're not just talking into the microphones and whatever hidden mics are in the walls here? I will say it's kind of funny. We have an old lady that lives across the street from us. Like, not only across the street. She's like literally, uh, like you walk out oh, our yeah, door and you touch her door. Lady. Yeah, and one day she spoke to us for about five minutes in Spanish. We we didn't understand a word. They were like, yeah, yeah, yeah great, okay. great, great, great. And every time since, whenever we walked up and someone has mentioned it, they just walk up and shut the door. <laughs> and it's like, oh, oh, maybe we offended. We did not mean to. Uh, yeah. But if we have any pastries left, uh, we'll definitely drop them on her door on the way out. Yeah, I so. feel like we get, we got to get her some. She's yeah. so cute. We got we to gotta win her back on our side yeah. for sure. Oh, and uh, don't be uh, surprised when you feel like you need to adopt every dog or animal oh or cat gosh. around here. They're so freaking cute. Yeah, don't do that though, folks. All right, we'll see you soon. <laughs>